So, let's do it. 20 things you might not know about Final Fantasy X. We all know that Final Fantasy X is a long old game. It features hours and hours and hours of cutscene and dialogue. The cutscenes are unskippable, so it always takes a long time to get through. But did you know that the speedrun record for this game is under 10 hours? So despite a good 7-8 hours of those cutscenes, you can still complete this game in under 10 hours, which is mighty impressive. Next up we have an Aeon that everybody loves and that is Yojimbo. I mean who doesn't love seeing Yojimbo use that infamous Zanmato attack to destroy any enemy in the game. But during the animation for this attack, when your own Yojimbo is using it, the reflection in the sword is correct. But when Dark Yojimbo is using this attack, the reflection in the sword is actually of the normal regular Yojimbo. So the reflection is incorrect. Number three, keeping on the theme of Yojimbo, we all know that Yojimbo has an adorable dog by his side, who you can't target because, you know, he's too cute to be killed. But what you might not know is that if you search for his name on the internet, you'll see that everyone writes his name as Daigoro. But from what we know, from what we've actually dug up from the game's files, uh, Daigoro is actually called Koma Inu. I've probably butchered that pronunciation big time, but it literally translates as Lion Dog. So. Yojimbo's dog's name is Koma Inu, but it's never written anywhere in the game, but it can be found if you dig into the game's data files. So this is a little bit of a, a funny one that I stumbled across while I was doing my research for this video. One of my favourite quotes in the entire game is a little kid running around a Kilika who excitedly says that he wants to be a Blitzball when he grows up. Now obviously this is one of those things that is just hilarious, but it turns out that it's actually not an incorrect translation. Apparently the original Japanese also said I want to be a Blitzball when I grow up. But apparently in the HD remaster they fixed the Japanese version to probably say I want to I want to be a Blitzballer when I grow up I assume. I mean I don't know what it says. If anyone knows the original Japanese please let me know in the comments. But apparently in the HD remaster of the English version as we've seen uh, they haven't fixed the translation. So if you're not playing the Japanese version of the HD remaster that kid still wants to be a Blitzball when he grows up, and I wish him the best of luck. Number five, I am sure everyone who's been to the Cavern of the Soul and Faith has met the Magic Urn, and met the Magic Urn many times because I think, based on playtesting, he appears up to about 40% of the time in the, in the Cavern of Soul and Faith. But this is not uh, the thing that I'm sharing. What I'm going to share is that there are actually two ways to kill the Magic Urn because most of you guys probably never bothered to kill the Magic Urn, but there's two ways to do it. One is a trusty old Zanmato, which you probably could have guessed, but the other is Doom. The central eye has a Doom counter of 200, so you can defeat these annoying little bastards. But what's annoying is that the Magic Urn will still have the last laugh, because even if you defeat it, it doesn't give you anything. And with that, we move swiftly on to the Monster Arena. Uh, in the Monster Arena, there's a section called Original Creations, but you will quickly realize that the creations in there aren't very original because they're all rehashes of previous bosses or future bosses that you will see in the game. But there is only one enemy in the entire monster arena that you cannot fight anywhere else and that is Nestlug. For some reason that is the only truly original, original creation. But there is speculation that they might have wanted to use it as a random encounter somewhere because in Final Fantasy X-2 there's like a, a mini version that appears I think in the Moonflow region. But yes, Nestug is the only truly original, original creation. So maybe you've been fighting warrior monks in Zanakund or Bevel or something like that. And you might have Slayer Overdrive ability equipped or Victor or something like that. And you kill an enemy and you realise that even though you've only killed one enemy, your overdrive has kind of gone up by more than it should. Why has this happened? Well, the answer is actually quite interesting. These monks carry guns, right? And the game, for whatever reason, considers these guns to be like a second fiend. So it treats them as like a, a second opponent. So when you end up killing a warrior monk, you actually end up getting double because it, the game treats it as though you've killed two people. So if you have Slayer Overdrive mode, for example, your overdrive will charge double. And it also counts double for Don Tumbri's uh, Karma move. So if you've ever seen the stat maxing related things that have the Don Tumbri trick method, then uh, this will help you get your kill count up so that Don Tumbri does even more damage. So, Warrior Monks count as double. I know you guys love your technical ones, so here's another one that you might find interesting. There is one way in this game to create an infinite loop while you're in a battle. And what I mean by this is you are going to get stuck in this battle and there is absolutely no way out of it and you'll have to reset your console. So theoretically, if you haven't saved for a long time, this could actually ruin a save. It's unlikely to happen, 
but it's uh, it's possible. It's definitely possible. So the way to trigger this infinite loop is to have an Aeon with uh, high HP, high defense, and the regen ability. You have to fight the tankette in the monster arena, and the tankette has a very interesting ability called Rush Attack. And Rush Attack is a rank 1 attack, which means that it's very quick and has a very high recovery time. And at the same time, it causes delay. So what Rush Attack does is that it will keep on attacking until the enemy is dead. So what happens here is, if you if your Aeon has regen, and you attack Tanket, and Tanket hits back with Rush Attack, Tanket will keep on hitting you over and over again. But because your defense is high, and your HP is high, regen will always outheal whatever damage Tanket is doing to you. But because of the delay caused by the attack and Tanket's speed of attack, because it's rank 1, it will always get the next turn before you do, and you will be stuck in an infinite loop where Tanket is trying to kill you with rush attack, but you are not dying, and regen will not wear off because you do not get a turn. So you will be stuck in a loop like this forever, and Tanket will just keep ramming the shit out of you hopelessly. So you'll have to reset your console in this case. So this is one of the only ways we can get such an infinite loop like this in the game. So this time I'm going to share something completely different. Kimari is one of my favourite characters in this game because he doesn't speak very often but when he speaks it's almost always something of substance so quality over quantity with Kimari. But just how little does Kimari speak? Well I decided to check it out. Kimari in the entire game, in the main story if you don't count optional conversations that you can do later on and that kind of stuff, he only has 159 words in the entire game. So you might be thinking what does that mean in, in relative terms? Well let's compare that with Tidus, our hero. Tidus reaches 159 words before he even gets to Barge Temple, so that's easily within the first hour of the game. So that is how little Kimari actually speaks in the game. Okay, I have another one for you that's to do with stuff that's uh, in the data in the game disc but does not make it into the main game. And that is the fact that there is a Buster Sword that Tidus can equip in this game. And it's in the game data but it never made it into the, into the final game. And I think that there is a video on this uh, on YouTube. You will see Tidus using the Buster Sword, which is uh, pretty interesting. So yes, the Buster Sword exists in Final Fantasy X, but you have to, to hack it to, to bring it to life. Unfortunately, Final Fantasy X was never released with dual audio. There are ways around it to get undubbed versions. You can check my channel for an undubbed movie. But in general, we've only ever seen the game in English or in Japanese. But what's interesting about the, the two dubs is that in the, in the infamous final scene where Yuna has to say goodbye to Tidus, or Tidus has to say goodbye to Yuna, yes, yeah, that way around, uh, in the English version, Yuna says, I love you to Tidus. But in the Japanese dub, she actually only says, thank you to Tidus, which I think is a subtle but also very significant change. So yeah, let me know what you think about that one. But yeah, two different dubs, two different lines. So when we're at the beginning of the game and uh, we meet Riku, we have to do a little bit of salvaging and uh, restoring energy and all this kind of stuff. And while we're down there, we see a shot of an ancient airship that's kind of buried at the bottom of the sea. But what you might not have realized is that that is exactly the same airship that Sid uses to escape from home. And that's the same airship that we ride throughout the final part of the game. This next one, if you've watched my walkthrough, you'd already know this, but in case you haven't, there are an interesting set of weapons in the game that actually do 12.5% more damage than the others. Why? There is no reason for this, but it's just the way it is. If you get a weapon that's been dropped by a bomb type enemy, those ones have a damage constant of 18 instead of 16. So those guys end up doing more damage than any other weapon in the game for that reason. Uh, they don't have the best customizability or stuff to equip, but for some reason, especially in some uh, some challenges, they can prove useful. But bomb drop weapons have a hidden 12.5% extra damage ability. This next one is something that might not be so well known by newer generation players, people that started to pick up Final Fantasy X after the, the HD remasters. Those of us from the PS2 days will probably know about this, but newer players, this might be news to you. So in the PS2 version, uh, in the international version on the PS2, there is actually a new game plus glitch. And the way it used to work was that it was difficult to do, but if you were to revisit B Canal and you try to, to go past the two guys that are blocking the entrance to home, there was a way that if you if you could talk and move at the same time somehow, you could you could kind of break through that little gap 
and if you are able to do that then you go back to home and the game starts again as if you've never been there before but you get to keep all of your extras that you had before apparently there's reports that it causes issues in terms of like further glitches or freezing and that kind of stuff but there are also people who say they've successfully triggered it and just continued to play the game almost as a new game plus from there so yes there was this glitch but that is the only version for which this glitch exists i believe so interesting stuff Okay, I've got some Blitzball ones for you now. The first one is that there is somebody called Durren in this game. Again, walkthrough people will know about this, but if you're trying to recruit Blitzball players, there is a player called Durren who is at the bottom of the Calm Lands just before the entrance to the Sunken Cave, and he's sitting there swinging his sword around training. Now, if you want this guy on your team in Blitzball, he's a decent goalkeeper, but funnily enough ends up having the worst stats pretty much of any player at level 99. But if you want him on your team because he's a decent goalie, you need to sign in there and then. After you have your first in encounter slash fight with Sin, Durren disappears and he is probably the only player in the game, he's definitely the only recruitable player in the game, that completely disappears off the face of Spira and he cannot be found anywhere. So he is a, he is a missable player in the game and he's unique in that sense. Oh, good old Durren. I'm sure he's out there somewhere. So, during your blitzing endeavours you will have needed to do some tech copying and you've probably done this to varying degrees of success but, you know, all in all there's a, there's a fairly common method to do it throughout but there is one ability in Blitzball that is pretty much impossible to tech copy and that is anti-drain. There's been a few people who have claimed to have done it but there's absolutely no evidence for anyone who has and a lot of the, the game's veterans who have been blitzing for over 10 years and have tried this, you know, hundreds, thousands of times they have all been unsuccessful why nobody knows but anti-drain is pretty much impossible to tech copy in this game and i have one final one about blitzing so when you start the game you have the original aurochs uh, one thing that you will always be frustrated about is how crap keeper is in goal especially against uh, the luca goers he's going to constantly let in goals because his catching is only five and you know he just doesn't seem to be a cow for blitzball but you might not have known that if you stick with Keeper and get him all the way up to level 99, he is the only player in the game who ends up with 99 shooting. That's right, I said shooting, not catch. He becomes the best shooter in the entire game. So don't underestimate Keeper. So how many of you guys have actually heard Waka's theme in the game? The answer to that question should be zero because Waka's theme is not heard at all in the game. And the only way you can listen to it is an unreleased track the only way you can listen to Waka's theme is if you actually buy it from the theatre in Luca as a sphere. Why? I do not know, but Waka's theme is not heard in the game and it's an unreleased track. Okay, so we've talked about glitches once before, but I'm going to have one more piece of information about glitches. There is one glitch in this game that is an, a major time saver and it's been around for a very long time. And this glitch allows you to skip the Jose Temple section entirely. And it's not something that I knew about until I started trying to research for information here, which it was a revelation to me as well, so even I didn't know about it. But you can skip the entire temple, and you do not have to do the cloister of trials, you don't do the cutscenes there, and you don't get Ixion either. So if you want to do like a speedrun in which glitches are allowed, or you just for whatever reason want to skip that whole thing, there is a way to do it. So yes, there is a glitch that will allow you to skip the entire Jose temple section. So, for the final thing that you might not have known about Final Fantasy X, I'm going to try and answer a question. The question is, what is the most powerful attack in Final Fantasy X? Because when we're playing the game, and especially when we get to, to higher levels, we see lots of moves that hit the, uh, the damage cap, 99,999. So I'm sure you've maybe wondered how far you can go beyond that. I mean, maybe does the attack actually hit for 150,000 and we only see it up to the damage limit, or is it actually hitting for more? So I asked the question that was previously asked uh, on the forums as well of what is the most powerful attack in Final Fantasy X and the answer is actually quite interesting. So the most amount of damage that you can inflict with a single move, uh, the answer changes based on what version of the game you're playing. So if you're playing the original Japanese version on the PS2, the answer is, I'm happy to tell you, Auron. So, any Auron fans out there, you will be able to say that Auron has the most powerful attack in the entire game, for the Japanese version. And if Auron is equipped with his Celestial Weapon, the Mass Immune, he has Berserk status, he's at 1 HP of a possible maximum HP, so his HP is maxed, and he has 5 times cheer, 
Auron can inflict 7.6 million damage. Now, of course, when I say 7.6 million, you would have to hack the game in order to remove the, uh, the damage cap. But if you were to do that, you would know that Auron's attack is the most powerful in the entire game. But this only applies for the original Japanese version, which I think in the year 2015, not many of us would still have at this point, if ever. So let's talk about the maximum possible damage for the other versions. So the HD remastered versions, the PAL version on the PS2, uh, the North American version on the PS2, etc. Because the answer is different. In the original Japanese version, Auron's uh, Mass Immune has like a different calculation regarding how much damage it does. So that is why Auron is, is able to achieve his uh, 7.6 million. Might I add with a critical hit, I can't bother to, to go back and re-record that. He needs a critical hit for the 7.6 million. So in the version that most of us are playing nowadays, that title actually belongs to Kimari, which you might not have expected. Kimari's Nova Overdrive, if Kimari has maximum magic and five times focus, and it deals a critical hit. Yes, I know, I just said magic and critical hit in the same sentence, but that's just the way it goes, that's the game's mechanics. Kimari's Nova Overdrive can hit for 5.1 million, and he has a title for the most damaging attack in the regular versions that we're playing nowadays. But I've been talking about the most damage that we can do in the game. The actual most powerful attack in the entire Final Fantasy X universe, whatever version of the game you're playing, is the Dark Magus Sisters Delta attack. This attack is absolutely monstrous and not only that it hits six times. Each individual attack hits for more than one million damage and because you get hit six times from this attack when you add them all up the theoretical maximum amount of damage that the Dark Magus Sisters Delta attack can do is 9.9 .9 million. So they almost break the 10 million barrier. So there we have it guys, that is 20 things that you might not have known. Hopefully I got you with at least some of these so it was worth your time. But if you did enjoy it, feel free to share this video so we can share some of that Final Fantasy X love. And do let me know in the comments if you want to see more stuff like this. And if you do, I will do my best to dig up some more knowledge about this game. Alright, thank you guys for watching. Wishing you all the best. Take care.